Good afternoon. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this quick video. E as a limit value. There are two good functions out there and they're placed here before you. If you were to evaluate them in each instance, you'd have this output of your limit to be E. The value E here serves very well as an output. In this equation here on the bottom, limit as x approaches zero, you have this equation one plus x to the power of one over x, you get E over here. If you were to just do a good graph of it, it would be a graph which would look something like this. As x value was zero, you would see a y-intercept here of zero comma e. But this right here is talking about this second equation over here. What I want to do is focus on this top equation because I find that more interesting. If you were to take the reciprocal of x and make that equal to n, this equation right over here will very well become the equation on the very top. And then we can look at the remainder of this video, spend some time on this top equation. That right there is the focus of this video. And I find that definitely to be a bit more educational. You can do a good approximation here in terms of numbers and actually arrive at E and let N over here be a number such as 9999. And you would do a placement of this into places of N. And you can see this and it'll very well come out to be the case that you will end up with a value very close to E. And we can run this here on the calculator here. We'll do 1 divided by 99,999. We'll add that to 1. We will do exponent of 99,999, we'll get here 2.7182, but as you can see, as you add more nines, as you add more of these numbers, this value here will become closer and closer to the true value of E. But that right there is just one way of doing it using approximations. What I want to do in this video is show you a good way of doing it in a perhaps a better way using indeterminate limit forms. We have a placement here of infinity in place of n. You can do that 1 plus 1 over infinity and you're looking at this infinity. This zeroes out. 1 divided by very large number zeroes out. You're looking at really here 1 infinity which here is an indeterminate and you remember this from your limits uh, classes indeterminate power type. When you have an indeterminate power type your goal is to convert it into an indeterminate product type. And you can do that by utilizing natural log. We have an equation y is equal to 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n. This here is our function. If you were to employ the logs, the natural logs, you're doing ln y, the properties of logs, you get n, and here you get ln 1 plus 1 over n. And you know you're doing all of this with regards to this infinity. If you put infinity in places of n, you'll have infinity here, and here you'll have natural log of basically 1. And you'll get 0 times infinity, you'll get your indeterminate product type and you know when you have an indeterminate product type there's a clear route you can take to convert it into a quotient type the route you have is basically you have a product type you're converting it into something which looks like this and that's the route we want to take a quotient route because then this will allow you to do the Le Hopital's rule procedure and do the derivative of the numerator and the denominator we can spend a few minutes doing exactly that with what we have right over here Let's erase everything and we'll create space. We know we have established an indeterminate power type and we can convert it and we have converted into the product type. Now we have to convert it into the quotient form and let's do that. Here is a f function, here is a g function. I want to look at the form where I'm doing g divided by the reciprocal of f. And we'll run that through. We're going to do the derivative with respect to n of this g function. You know it's going to go to the Le Hopital's rule procedure you'll do ln 1 plus 1 over n and then you'll do the derivative here with respect to n of this of this f function which here happens to be n and we'll at the end be able to plug in infinity. When we do this we employ the chain rule d over du ln u and then du or dn you're doing the derivative of 1 plus 1 over n. In the denominator you're just doing the derivative of this reciprocal of n which is not hard. All of this right here is not hard but this is another way of looking at it in terms of how we develop this e value. The derivative of ln u is 1 over u. The derivative of all of this the 1 goes away 1 over n is minus 1 over n square. You can work that on the side. The derivative of this is minus 1 over n square. These will cancel out, but you can still apply infinity at the end. 1 over u, resubstitute u. You have 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. You can apply the infinity. If the 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, the basic indeterminate forms exist, you would do another round of Le Hopital's rule procedure, but that won't be the case. When you apply infinity here in places of n, this zeroes out, you end up just getting 1 over 1, which is just a 1. 
But your original question and statement was L and Y was equal to everything you've done over here, which here in this instance is equal to 1. You solve for this Y. Y is equal to E to the power 1, which is equal to E. And here it shows you exactly what we were trying to do. Remember, this right here is the route of the indeterminate power type, which was converted into an indeterminate product type, which was then converted into an indeterminate quotient form, which was then evaluated all the way through to give you the limit value here of E. And this question has been completed utilizing this method of approach. And with that, I thank you for watching. Have a good day.